triggered by a lawsuit from a producer that produced on the Love album who is making accusations and in those accusations he says that the gentleman confessed to the shooting. And that is what stands out to me the most because, you know, I've done my best to put it behind me and to move forward. Uh, and so, um, but it's... Yeah, my boy, my boy, um, Shine, he got a whole Belize uh, accent. I got an uncle that's from Belize. He sounds just like that. So so definitely, I don't know, did he grow up in New York or not? I grew up in New York, but, but he was in the New York area, right? Because he had sound very differently. Let me see, Shine... 2000, no, let's go, Shine 1998 or something. Let's see if we can find, this is his He kind of had like a little Biggie-esque type of, you know, people always thought that like, you know, uh, Biggie died and Diddy went to get Shine to sound like Biggie, right? The fucking dynasty, ooze of the clock, watch you ooze on the spot. Puff don't get a nod, nothing move on the block. These streets is ours to burn for the moves and rocks. Princess cuts, what the fuck? Watch the arm light up. Does it in the waist and the hood like... All right, well, anyway, he been back in Belize for 20 years, or 25 years. That's why he sound like this now. Certainly reopens the wounds that I've been saying this all along. Everyone knew all along that I was the fall guy. Um, but my political enemies and you know detractors try to make me into you know this criminal um but everyone knew that i was a young kid that took the fall everyone knew that that was the story i'm just saying that i maintain my innocence all this time i said i was defending myself i didn't get into who did what um but the victim is telling you who did what and another, I, I understand that there are other witnesses. Is she, is she accurate, sir? I'm not going to get into that. But it does open wounds. And um, certainly, I am... Why y'all saying Diddy promised him a million and snaked him? Yeah, that would be some fucked up shit, right? Like, yo, I just shot the club up, and I look at my mans who broke, and I say, yo, bruv, when the police come, you take the fall, gang? I got you on a milli. And now that I've seen that, all right, they lock you up, you going with the script, but then I realize, oh, they finna deport you. I'm like, why am I saying you the Millie? Like, the hell? <laughs> That's how y'all say what? That's kind of fucked up. Nah, Diddy wouldn't do no shit like that. Y'all niggas is wild, and Diddy wouldn't do no shit like that. Relieve that uh, people are saying what the truth is. Yo, chat, I agree with you. Somebody just said in the chat, yo, I can't stand niggas talking in riddles. Yo, Sean. You trying to halfway snitch, my nigga. You can't halfway snitch. Brother, the case done. You did the time. If you trying to get vindicated because now you're doing politics, you don't want people to think of you as a shooter to center. Bro, just tell us what we want to hear, bro. Yo, I took the fall for Diddy. Diddy's the one who shot. I been said that. But you know what? Listen, the only reason I'm saying it now, Diddy ain't send me my milli, okay? Diddy, you owe me some money because you paid Cassie off and you still finna go to jail. You you didn't pay me and, and I went to jail. Fuck that. Give me my money, nigga. I don't know. This time I said I was defending myself. I didn't get into who did what. Um, but the victim is telling you who did what. And another, I, I understand that there are other witnesses. Is she, is she accurate, sir? I'm not going to get into that. What? But... It does open wounds, and um, certainly I am relieved that uh, people are saying what the truth is, that, you know, I did not uh, shoot um, those people. I maintain that I never shoot nobody, um, that there were other guns there. I always said that. That has not. Yo, that's such heavy accent. I always he said, I never shoot nobody. Like, that's heavy accent. What the truth is that, you know, I did not uh, shoot um, those people. I maintain that I never shoot nobody, um, that there were other guns there. I always said that. That has not changed. And that is the testimony that came out. Um, fragments were never removed. Uh, so there was never any forensic testing to say who it was, uh, but the victims are vindicating me. Uh, witnesses are vindicating me. 
but I have I have moved on. I, I'm not trying to relive that. Uh, and, and so I am appreciative of whatever contributions uh, Diddy has made um, to help the people of Belize. Uh, I wish him well. I pray for him and I pray for the alleged victims. And, and if, if it is true, may justice be served. If it is not, um, it, it, it's a tragedy because a, a, a global icon um, would have been destroyed. Yo, Shine was saying a whole lot of nothing, man. It's like, nigga, do you want him to get locked up or you just want him to pay you or do you want him to just come clean or you just trying to clean your neck? Like, this was too confusing. It was just like, I've been telling everybody I ain't do it. Yo, you, you know the woman that you're relying on her testimony said Diddy did it. Like, it, actually, they didn't say you didn't do nothing, right? They just said Diddy shot her. There was multiple bullets fired. By the way, didn't we like watch a little thing about that before? 1999 shooting Diddy. We, we watch it like I, I don't want to watch no long ass thing on it again. Uh, this is like a whole thing. I don't want to watch like a whole thing with it no more. Oh, Traplo Ross actually did some shit. Who remembers shot? They were illegal Smith & Wesson handguns that had been reported stolen from Georgia. And on top of that, the prosecution called in a ballistics expert who suggested that if Puffy was standing exactly where witnesses had claimed he was standing at the time of the shootout, the bullet in the ceiling would have come from a gun that he was holding. One of the biggest bombshells came from Puffy's driver, Wardell Fenderson, who said that when he dropped Puffy off at the club in the SUV, he saw Puffy in the back holding a black handgun. Also, it has been brought to my attention that a number of you are stroking guns. Now, this is very interesting because if you go back to that initial press conference, he says that Puffy didn't even arrive in his own car, but he arrived in a different vehicle. Trying to make the case that if he didn't arrive in the car that the gun was in, then it couldn't have possibly been his. But if he left in a different car to the one that he arrived in and the gun was in that vehicle, then surely it's more likely that he was carrying that gun around with him, regardless of what vehicle he was in. He never went in that van to that club. He went in a private limousine. Hey, I don't know, call me Detective Trapple. Puff driver Fenderson later testified that whilst he was in the precinct, he was offered a bribe by both Diddy and his bodyguard Wolf. Reportedly, Diddy leaned in and said to him quietly, I'll give you $50,000 if you say the gun is yours. So combine what the driver said about Puffy arriving at the club with a black gun with the fact that Natanya Rubin said that she saw Puffy pull out a black handgun and then felt that she was hit in the face by a bullet. I was just out with friends. <laughs> In another development today, Natanya Rubin, who was hit by a flying bullet during the shooting, criticized the media for focusing on Combs and Lopez rather than the victims. I'm not famous. Does that make me any less valuable? But on cross-examination, Puffy's defense made a compelling case that both witnesses were just motivated by money because of the fact that they had already filed a civil suit against Puffy. So that's Puffy's case, but Shine's defense was a little bit different. He was trying to get off on the basis of self-defense, suggesting that he wasn't the first shooter and that Julius, who he'd shot in the shoulder, had shot at him first. He also said that the bullet that hit Natanya in the face might not have been from him and could have been a ricochet. He affirmed this years later after his release on the Combat Jack show. What was that second that made you say, fuck this? Ah, that second was when somebody reached for their strap. When I hit the kid that, that tried to shoot me, that's when the security from the club went and, you know, tried to grab me, and that's when the ratchet went off into the air. Mm. Now, Shine said that he had heard death threats made to Puffy in the club that night, and Julius Jones did admit that death threats had been made. But the prosecution completely tore this apart as a defense because under New York law, a verbal death threat is not enough for you to retaliate with deadly force. Shine brought forward a witness that said that somebody else shot first, but the prosecution clapped back, bringing five witnesses who all said that they saw Shine fire into the crowd three times. But yet another curveball was two late accusations of witness tampering against Diddy for supposedly denying speaking to two defense witnesses when phone records proved that he had. They also brought up two incidents in the past where Puffy had been associated with illegal guns, which he denied. The DA brought up two former incidents in which Puff Daddy is also allegedly being invested. I'm wondering, so the reason I'm watching this, I'm like, yo, if, if, if how could, this is 25 years afterwards. I know people could have paid people off this end third, but like, how could Diddy kind of get away scotch-free 
if the victim is saying, you know, look, think about the Meg situation. Like the Meg situation, she said Tori shot her, Tori went to jail, right? If the victim was always saying um, Diddy shot her, how the fuck does he get off? Investigated for possessing stolen guns during concerts in two other states. Incidents, he says, never happened. This afternoon, jurors sent the judge two notes, one of which asked for a transcript of a phone message Combs left Wardell Fenderson, once his driver, now the prosecution's star witness. Now, one of the most interesting aspects of this court case was the absence of Matthew Scar Allen, one of the thugs that had supposedly instigated the incident that night. Now, Scar was actually known to Shine before this incident took place, and Shine even admitted later on that he had sent Scar on missions in Brooklyn before. And Scar was a little tough guy, you know what I'm saying? I, I didn't send Scar to do missions for me. Hey, Scar, it's your boy Shine. I got a mission for you. Meet me at the parking lot with a hair dryer and some dental floss. We're gonna turn this 500 into a 600. Scar was initially scheduled to appear at this trial, but never did because he got a gun charge and failed to appear in court, going on the run and becoming a fugitive in the process. But in another shock development, Scar was eventually captured. And while he refused to testify in this case, he did offer a verbal description of what happened that night, which was written up by a senior investigator and signed by Scar himself. The statement essentially said that a third man in their group had thrown the money in Puffy's face after being offended by Puffy knocking over Scar's drink. He then says that Puffy pulled out his gun and opened fire from only four feet away. Puffy rebuked this, saying that he was never closer than eight feet to Scar Allen at any time and there were always people in between them. He also went on to say that he pretty much had no idea why Scar was screaming at him in the club. Which is funny, because usually people have no idea why Diddy is screaming at them. Savage! I'm a savage! Oh! I'm a savage! Whatever I want, I'm going to get! Whatever I want, I have to get! But in another interesting revelation from Scar's letter, it was revealed that apparently Puffy and Scar both had dueling hits out on each other. According to Puffy's lawyer, he had received death threats at the bad boy offices by phone, which had specific details about how Scar had this hit out on him. In addition to that, somebody associated with Scar had actually been spotted outside the courthouse talking into a walkie-talkie and giving details of Puffy's security details. Yo, Trapolo Ross is a legend. My boy really been putting a lot of work, very attention to detail. This is four years old. I, I just want to point that out. Four years old, you know, he, he looks obviously four years younger. Uh, my boy been putting in work, super attention to detail, man. This is why, like, you know, he's, you know, bubbled up to be one of the top guys at doing this type of level of intimate research about current and even old cases. But in that signed statement, Scar went on to elaborate, saying that he didn't want to testify because he believed a $50,000 hit had been put out on him by Diddy. Supposedly, Diddy had reached out and offered a $250,000 bribe for him not to testify, but he received information that he would be killed when he went to pick up that bag. Madness. But what? these details were all conjecture and they weren't actually allowed to be put forward in court. So after a grueling five week trial and over a year after this shooting had even taken place, the court was finally meeting to deliberate and give their verdict. You can see here Diddy arrives for deliberations, followed by his lawyer seemingly carrying his packed lunch. The closing arguments are given and the prosecution say that Diddy essentially tried to use his money, power and fame to try and get out of a situation that he was responsible for. Which doesn't really sound like Puffy to me. I mean, he also uses violence to get what he wants. But Puff's defense was keep it zipped. He didn't have an argument with Scar, he didn't see any money thrown at him that night, and he didn't tell the driver of the SUV to keep driving. And he didn't say anything to the other occupants of the SUV during the police chase. So in March 2001, the verdict was given and Puffy and his bodyguard Wolf were found not guilty on all charges. Puffy gave a well-considered and thoughtful response. <laughs> Sorry, wrong clip. Yeah, I want to just thank God for, for just being here for me and just just protecting me and my lawyers. This case is kind of spooky, right? Like, even just watching up to this point from what we were watching on this Trap Lord Ross video, man, it sounds like in most situations, you probably get convicted, right? There's a driver who's saying you, you had a gun. There's a witness who says you shot a gun. And there's other people who are basically saying you had an altercation with them, which probably led to the gun being used, motive, and you still don't go to, damn. You're Diddy Illuminati.
bringing me these two great lawyers, three great lawyers. Johnny Cochran claimed that this was the last criminal trial that he was doing before he was going civil full time, and what a way to go out. Though I personally think getting OJ off a second time for the sequel would have been a much better way to go out. But as we all know, Shine wasn't so lucky. Though he was acquitted of the most serious charge, attempted murder, he did end up taking the rap for all the other charges. So that's first degree assault, reckless endangerment and possession of an illegal firearm, and he was facing 10 years in prison. After the trial, Shine spoke out publicly against Diddy. He said that Puff lied about the two of them being close and their intentions to meet at Club New York that night. He also claimed that a bouncer that testified in the trial that they jumped onto Diddy when the shooting started, proving Puffy didn't have a gun, was lying. Puffy's response to this was pretty compassionate, and he actually said, I'm deeply saddened about Shine's conviction. I believe that Shine had no I had no intention of hurting anyone. My own victory is bittersweet because of what happened to Shine and the victims. Nice. Oh, and he also added at the end, uh-uh, uh-uh. So after the case, Puffy got a slew of civil lawsuits that totaled around a billion dollars and change. This included Ruben, who wanted 150 million, Julius Jones, who wanted 700 million, a third shooting victim called Robert Thompson, who wanted 50 mil, that driver that was offered a bribe wanted 3 million, and the club venue wanted 1.8 million. Ruben's attorneys wouldn't rule out filing a civil lawsuit. Last week, another shooting victim filed an $800 million lawsuit in connection with the shooting. And this is crazy. I mean, if you could get a billion dollar bag from getting shot in the face by Puff Daddy, everyone would be doing it. Hell, maybe that's how Elon Musk got his funding secured. But anywho, that civil trial was settled in 2011 and at least Natanya Rubin ended up getting $1.8 million. Not bad, but it ain't Akon though. Natanya spoke out about 15 years after this had even happened just to remind everyone about just how hard she'd had it. She said the news was sympathetic to the celebs rather than the victims. Puff Daddy went on to change his name to P Diddy to try and get away from this incident and improve his brand. And he just continued on with his career, making lackluster music and amusing hip hop fans the world over. I'm sure you can guess what Shine did after being sentenced to 10 years in jail. He sat in the slammer for 10 goddamn years. There was an interesting 2004 MTV interview with Shine while he was still behind bars. How would you describe the reality for those who might think they know what it's like? Oh no, this thing is for real. Like, you know, this, this thing is serious. You know, this is life or death. You, you die in here. Mm -hmm. You could die in here. Being here is like being dead because you got people that ain't going home ever. And this is pretty interesting to return to today because you still really get that impression that he felt like he was betrayed by Diddy. The dude told on me, you, you feel me? He sent witnesses to try to testify against me and all that. I was facing 25 years, so. Anything to help you in a situation? Absolutely not. He said on numerous occasions that if it wasn't for him shooting that night, Diddy and J-Lo wouldn't be alive today. But it's also clear that Shine's hardline no snitching mentality probably worked to his detriment because of the fact that he basically refused to say who shot at him first that night and never actually told the court up front who the hell he was defending himself against. I had to pull my gun out. I didn't pull it out and wave it around and say, you know, somebody want a piece of me. If, if you could have helped yourself out by identifying someone else or providing other information when you were in the stand, um, why you wouldn't do that? Because I was I was built like that, you know. There's certain rules that you know that you abide by, and this is the way I was brought up. That you don't you don't you know sacrifice anybody in order to spare yourself. I personally find it pretty fascinating that a rapper wouldn't even try and address to the court in order to get their freedom who it was that was trying to kill them that night. I mean, when you look at what goes on these days with like 6 9 and the deal that he got to get an early release, it just boggles my mind, but I guess I'm not a street cat. But Shine goes on to say that he actually managed to negotiate back the rights to his recordings from Bad Boy Records and eventually went on to release a 2004 album called Godfather Buried Alive. This dropped in August 2004 after Shine managed to secure a new deal with Def Jam. He released that album from jail, it had a Kanye West beat on it and even a track that he'd recorded over the phone from prison. Godfather Buried Alive hit number three on relevancy. And the only- All right, <clears throat> damn, interesting. Can the feds try to relitigate that? I think it'll be tough. I think he'll be tough. I think some of those people have passed away. That will be a very tough thing to try to relitigate. Obviously, the investigation into Sean Diddy Combs is currently ongoing. Uh, from what sources has told TMZ and other outlets, they are not taking anything off the table in terms of what they might look at. So I'm pretty sure they're going to do a top-to-bottom scrub of Diddy from taxes to assault to drug possession, gun possession, Assault, um, well, I said assault already, um, but sexual assault, um, kidnapping, coercion, sex trafficking, 
uh, it's going to be a whole lot of things, shootings, whatever, uh, whatever they, they could try to investigate to try to get something. Because I do believe that the way that how the feds kind of ran down on Diddy would be very embarrassing if they came up with nothing. It would be very, very, very embarrassing. And it would be embarrassing because eventually Diddy would have to speak about this. And by the way, you know, you know the way how most of these things you would imagine happens, they would probably try to grand jury it. And if nothing came out of anything, yeah, it would be like, yeah, it's embarrassing, right? We will see. We will see. I think they're going to try to stick it to him with something. Okay. Um, speaking of which, speaking of which, my man 6 9 I don't know what the hell. Man, so new allegations coming out about Diddy, man. Now they're saying that Diddy, you feel me, he's like $100 million in debt, which probably is true. But people don't understand this one thing. Like, I ain't gonna lie, even all the negative stuff about Diddy, no smart businessman, you feel me? Let's say you're gonna buy a house. Like, Ross buying all these houses right now. Ross, Ross probably has loans out the same way as Diddy. Like, let's keep it a beam, bro. Diddy, he probably has like 200, you feel me? Who knows how much worth of real estate he has? But like, they said he's like 100 to $150 million in debt. He probably has a payment plan, you feel me, to pay that off within like the next 10 to 20 years. They said the most recent thing he has to pay off is in like 2029. Diddy's making a lot of money. Like, you feel me? He, this is what you call good debt. So you don't have to give all that money up, up front. Cause who wants to openly just give a hundred to $150 million up front when you probably, when he could probably just pay like $2 million a year or like $3 million a year or $4 million a year. Like, so he's getting to actually make more and more money so he could pay it off better and better rather than just paying it all at once. Like, you feel me? If, if it was probably like five to 10 minutes, he probably would have just paid it all off. But like a hundred million dollars, I feel him on that, bro. Like no one's really spending a hundred million dollars to like fully pay a house off. Like it's like cash rich billionaires versus like billionaires. Like Elon Musk, he's not a cash rich billionaire. Like uh, uh, it's hard going in just in a situation like this. Like Elon Musk, he's worth hundreds of billions of dollars. But he doesn't like his money's in like stocks and like stuff like that intellectual property of stuff that he owns or like hella stocks that he owns. And then you have people like uh let's see who's rich who's just like cash rich, uh Mark Zuckerberg's cash rich. So like how he's building his house in Hawaii and stuff right now or bunker wherever it is. He's cash rich. All this is, is cash. Like, you feel me? He probably has billions in a bank account. So it's like different types of like money. I feel like Diddy, like overall, like net worth, he's probably like a billionaire or like really like 800 plus million dollars up there. But like liquid cash, Diddy probably doesn't. Diddy probably doesn't keep more than like 50 million dollars liquid 50 to 100 million dollars liquid because if you just have your money just sitting there why why have your money just sitting there when you can have your money making money for you you feel me so that's probably the mindset i did he had which is not a bad mindset you leaving money in a bank account is not really going to change anything unless it's like a high yield bank account but anyways i'm you feel me i don't want to nerd anyone out with all these topics so let me know how you guys feel about the whole thing. It's your boy Big Egg News. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and let me know how you guys feel about Diddy. And I am out.